saw so much foolish stuff for a soldier to be carrying. He must have ten uniforms, boots, all kinds of reading books, silver eating tools, white tablecloths. Major Richardson is a British gentleman first, Jeremiah, and a soldier second. His inventions have made him a rich man, and he's learned to live like one. He's got some kind of a machine in there. Looks like it for fixing guns. You know, the fact that he's heading for those rifles must mean our information about date of arrival and port of delivery is wrong. We British are not bested so easily by your friends in high office. You see, we arranged for false information to be circulated, anticipating just such a contingency as this. Where are the rifles, Daniel? Well, according to this, they're due to be delivered in Salem and then on to Fort Stiles. Fort Stiles has only a small garrison, a few dozen men. According to this, 200 hand-picked riflemen are en route there to train and serve under Major Richardson. Oh, to prove the rifles under battle conditions. I think that's the idea. Rather frustrating, isn't it, Mr. Boone? Those rifles won't do them much good without you, Major. My dear man, the whole British Army doesn't cease to function if one officer disappears. Anyway, anyone can learn to fire a breech loader, even mine. In any case, I'm of no value to you without my rifles. I think he's got a point, Mingo. Well, you ain't gonna let him go, Dan. Not exactly. The Major arrived at the port of Boston less than a week ago, and he's never been here before. That's correct. What about it? He's due to report to Fort Stiles. Now, chances are no one there knows what he looks like. Mr. Boone, surely you're not thinking of trying to pass someone else off as me. I am thinking about it considering the stakes. Well, they may not know my face, but my reputation is well established. Anyway, where could you possibly find anyone in this wilderness to impersonate an educated British officer and gentleman of breeding and culture? Right here. This savage? Well, this savage, Major, is a graduate of Oxford. And as for your reputation, you may have difficulty living up to it once Mingo is impersonated. You know, now, let's get out of this opening. We've got some work to do. Uh, All right, Mingo, go! You don't actually believe he can learn in a matter of hours the skills of a lifetime, do you? I think you can learn well enough, Major, to fool anybody but you, and since you won't be there to call him on. Done. First rate, Mingo. Now let's work on fire. Uh -huh. than you, Daniel. Speed's important, Mingo. It's not worth the hoot without accuracy. All right, fire at the same speed. weapon. Yes, sir, Major. Your rifle in the hands of 200 Kentuckians, well, they'd be the equal of a thousand of the Crown's finest. Well, you're getting a little ahead of yourself, Mr. Boone. Even if he is accepted as me, how do you plan to get those rifles out of Fort Stiles? 
Well, that's a good question. I wish I had the answer. By golly, Mingo, it suits you. As well, it suits my father's English blood, but my mother's Cherokee blood is on the war path over the scalping you gave me. Well, the Herald rule back. Yes, if my head is still connected to my neck when this is over. Well, there's no call to fret about that. I understand spies are shot and not beheaded. I can't tell you how that reassures me, Daniel. By the way, how am I to contact you when I've arranged everything? You're orderly. Orderly? Jeremiah. Well, you reckon I'll pass for an Englishman? You will if there's a place in England called Kentuck. Huh? From now on, you're going to develop a sudden case of sore throat. Sore throat? The minute he enters that fort, he's going to go mute. Is he trying to tell me I talk funny? Oh, he meant no offense, Jeremiah. It's just that you speak a little peculiarly for a British red coat. Uh, Daniel, do you uh, intend to remain camped here? Mm -hmm. Aren't we a bit close to Fort Stiles? I know that. But it shouldn't take you too long to figure a way to get those rifles out. The Major's wagon should come in handy. You can get word to me by Jeremiah, hopefully by morning. There's now to be redcoats swarming all over this place come daylight. There may even be patrols through the night. Major, I'm going to have to ask you to change your uniform. I will not, sir. Well, either you take those clothes off or Mingo and I are going to help you. Jeremiah's clothes should fit you just fine. Those filthy buckskins. Impossible. Well, now, Major, a bound and gag prisoner in buckskin would look a lot more natural to a British patrol than a trussed-up gentleman shivering in his drawers. British officer and wagon approaching the gates. Major Richardson. Colonel. I insist that you inspect my papers, Colonel. Yes, of course, but I have been expecting you, and there are several... Well, then I presume that my quarters are ready. Yes, but I thought we'd have a little talk first. Now, where are they? Well, you're in the same building with me. Our offices, dining room and so on, are in headquarters building. Yes. Well, that should be satisfactory. Uh, quarter my horse, won't you, please? Take my personal effects to my quarters. Now... Please, Colonel, I should like to inspect my shipment of rifles. Uh, where are you keeping them? Well, that's what I've been trying to tell you. I received notification early this morning that there was a storm at sea. The ship has been delayed. It's not expected to dock in Salem until late tomorrow. Yes, well, that is uh, a disappointment, isn't it? <laughs> then I assume that you have... Uh provided a suitable place to store the rifles when they do arrive. Oh, yes, I've made room in the arsenal. They'll be quite safe there, locked up tight. But I do have a pleasant surprise for you, Major, to offset your disappointment. Oh? Yes, your 200 riflemen on their way here will arrive under the command of Captain Halstead. Uh, Captain Halstead? Barnaby Halstead. I understand your old school chums. Oh, you mean that, Captain? Of course, Captain Halstead. <laughs> Yes, well, delightful. <laughs> Come along. Oh. I reckon you're used to something fancier, but your app's how to make this taste pretty good. I shall take extreme personal pleasure in attending your execution, Mr. Boone. 
You like to count your chickens, don't you, Major? You'll never get those rifles out of British-held territory. Even if your Indian friend does succeed in fooling the Commandant at Fort Stiles. Why don't you kill me, Mr. Boone? If you're entertaining an idea of somehow using me to aid you with your flight... Eat it. It tastes better while it's hot. <laughs> I never claimed to be much of a cook, but it is nourishing. What is it? Be quiet. Be quiet. Why should I? Listen. something? That I did. Like someone shouting for help. Seen it come from that direction. Right. This way. I was never so glad to see a British uniform in all my life. That's so. See, some rebels, they made me prisoner. And who might you be? Oh, the clothes. I'm Major Richardson, Corporal. Major John Richardson. Some, some rebels captured me. But if you'll be good enough to untie me... Yeah, I'll untie your legs, all right. <laughs> so you can march at the point of my musket. You're making a terrible mistake, Corporal. Well, one of us surely is, mister. Major John Richardson arrived at Fort Stiles an hour ago. Fool, that man is an imposter! Well, that's for the Colonel to decide, not me. Now march, mister. All this finery, Major, is bad for my morale. Makes me feel a bit homesick. Well, the truly civilized man carries his civilization with him, Colonel. I, for one, should find it uh, unbearable to have to live for very long as the primitives in this country do. Well, then I must apologize for the plain fare my orderly prepared for your palate. No, no, no. I'm quite well aware of the difficulties in finding a proper cook once one leaves England. Which is precisely why I found it necessary to bring Chester here as my orderly. Not only is he an excellent soldier, but an accomplished chef as well. Isn't that so, Chester? Perhaps you'd better not try to speak. Your vocal cords will never heal. As soon as we're settled in, I'm sure that Chester will take great pleasure in delighting you with his skills in the kitchen. Hmm. What exactly happened to his voice? Uh, dust along the trail, I expect. Inflammation of the throat. Chester, you see, is accustomed to the more salubrious climate of our homeland. And his health, I fear, is rather delicate. Corporal Watkins and patrol. Out now. Sir, there's uh, something that requires your attention. Yes, what is it, Corporal? Well, it's urgent, sir. Well, speak up, then. Uh, well, I don't think you'd want to bother Major Richardson, sir. Well, I'm sure it can wait till I finish my coffee. Well, I suppose it can, sir, but I thought you might like to attend to it now. I mean, just in case there's something to it. Not that all I think there is. All right, I'm... Corporal, all right. Anything to stop your babbling. Excuse me, Major, this will only take a moment, I'm sure. That was all about. I don't know, but why do you keep telling him I'm such a good cook? I was playing a part, Jeremiah. Overplaying your hand is more like it. The way you talk to him, he's a colonel, you're a major. But you've seen the major, you know his reputation. He'd be arrogant.